All right. Hey, today what I wanted to do was have a discussion about blogging. And specifically, I'm getting questions like, is blogging dead? Is SEO dead? Is the way that we're blogging going to change? How is it going to change? What can we do to replace our Google organic traffic? All of those things. So this is the big caveat that I want to share before we get started on this conversation, because that's what it is. It's just a general conversation about those topics. I am not an SEO professional. I've never been an SEO professional. I follow a lot of SEOs on Twitter and on YouTube. And so anything that I bring to the table on SEO is from purely anecdotal evidence, not some scientific experimentation that I've done. So I want to get that out of the way. I'm not a business consultant either. So don't make business decisions based on this YouTube video, okay? because these are just my opinions about what I see going on now and some of the things that I'm reading. And I'm just trying to lend some insight based on this anecdotal evidence. And then you can take it and do with it what you want. So let's talk about what's happened. By now, I think everybody knows that niche sites got hit pretty heavily. If you were creating niche sites and specifically doing something where you were creating content at scale, so you're using AI writing tools and optimization tools, and your whole purpose for writing an article was purely to get found by Google and drive traffic, maybe you're selling some affiliate products, maybe you've got uh, advertising on your site, that kind of thing. But let's be honest, you probably weren't an expert in that particular area. Now, in some cases, people were and they still got hit. But you know what I'm getting at. There are some case study sites that were created by some SEOs, well-known ones on YouTube, that got hit pretty hard. And they were using AI writing tools to write about different topics that they weren't specifically experts in. So a lot of niche blogs got hit. A lot of them that had those how-to articles, you know, very high-level articles, just answering questions. And that used to work, and apparently Google doesn't like that. And probably because there was a lot of AI sort of spammy type content out there, and they were trying to get rid of it. The interesting thing is, of course, there are always anomalies, right? There were some brands that got hit that really didn't have any AI content, I also found in a couple of niches that I'm interested in some sites that are still surviving and they're very much that niche kind of content answering those how-to questions. I think they survived because the domains were so old. That was the other thing that I was seeing. The survivors in this thing were older domains. New domains were getting hit as well. Other sites that got hit heavily, I just mentioned. Anything that was built publicly on YouTube, some big SEOs had sites hit because they were sort of building in public and sharing their SEO information and how to get found on Google. And that could have led to those sites getting either de-indexed or hit with manual penalties. So if you've been in the Google SERPs recently, you know the big winners are user-generated content sites like Reddit and Quora. They survived. A lot of e-commerce sites that had blogs survived. I also found brand sites where they were selling a product, selling a service, and they had a blog. They survived as well. Now, the interesting thing is I found at least a couple of sites that had almost pure 100% AI content, but because Google looked at them as a brand, somehow they made it through this core update. Now, my guess is Google is going to roll out more and more updates in the future, probably closer together. So, you know, time will tell whether these sites are around later on. Here's one thing that we know for sure, Search is going to change, and the traditional way that we search is going to change. So all the major search engines are switching over to a generative search situation. So what is generative search? You can see here on my screen, this is perplexity, perplexity perplexity.ai. It's a tool that does generative searches. And so I just asked it, what is generative search, right? And it comes back with this very complete answer. The way generative search is going to end up affecting blogs is if you're creating a lot of how-to posts or why, how, can, do, etc. posts, people can go into a search engine like Perplexity, post that question, and get a pretty complete answer. For example, this question, what is generative search? Perplexity is using these sources right here. 
there's two more sources that they used. You can't see them, but the, they're being used as well. This is how search is going to change. You're not going to see this laundry list of links, and then you go through and you read the title, and you read the description and decide which one to go to. If you wanted to go visit one of these sites, you certainly could. You could click here, and it would take you over to WebFX, and you could go in and read their article. But what are the chances that you're going to do that when you can see the information right here, right? Probably not going to happen. What are the chances that you're even going to look at the other two sources of information? So, you know, here are the five sources that were used to answer this question. It's probably pretty slim that you're going to do that. So this is where search is going. Personally, I like this kind of search situation. It makes it easier for me to find the information that I want quickly. I can follow it up with extra questions. So how does generative search differ from traditional search? Now it's content creation. In the past, it was content retrieval. And then a third question I asked, and this is the one thing that I find somewhat of paradox here, is does generative search rely on large language models? And of course it does. So it's relying on all of those posts that we used to make uh, and put on our blogs. So it's going to go out and scrape that information so it can return these answers. That's sort of the conundrum here, right? This is only going to be as good as what gets put in the search engines for perplexity to scrape or for Google or Bing to scrape. But the bottom line is this is where search engines are going. I don't think that's going to change. So as a blogger, you know, if you're depending purely on or organic traffic to go to your blog, whether it's from uh, Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo or any other search engine, I think this is where they're going. This is the kind of user experience that, that you're going to have in the future. It sort of makes the way that we used to do blogging just doesn't align with where I see search engines going in the future. So what does this mean to you? So is traditional blogging as we know it dead? This is my opinion. I think traditional blogging and the way that we have been doing it is going away. Now we have to start thinking about other ways to drive traffic to a website. And I think part of that is going to be diversifying where you're getting your traffic from. So what are some good alternatives to drive traffic to a website? You know, starting a podcast is very easy. You can do that. You don't have to show your face if you don't like showing your face. YouTube has been great for me. I think a combination of YouTube and a website is an excellent way to go. And I also think using other social media tools is important. And the reason I think this diversification is important is because it's apparent that Google likes brands. If you want to make yourself look more like a brand, well, what, what does a big brand do? They incorporate social media. They sometimes have YouTube videos or podcasts to support their website. That's just something that I think we're going to have to start looking at more carefully. I plan on sharing more software tools and services that can help you do that. I'm also going to share more software tools that help you repurpose content. Let's say you start a podcast, you want to take your podcast episode and convert it into a blog or into social media posts, that kind of thing. I'm going to share more tools and services that do that for you. And the main reason I want to do that is because if you're truly going to go down this path, it does seem overwhelming if you're a single entrepreneur on your own to do all this, right? Not everybody has a team of people. And so you need to understand the tools and services that are going to give you a workflow and allow you to incorporate social media and other platforms and drive traffic back to a website. The bottom line is this, in my opinion, if you're going to build a blog or a website and depend solely on Google for your traffic, what's going to happen is every time they do an update, you may be affected by this. You're always going to live with that hanging over your head. So this is why I think that there has to be other ways to drive traffic back to a site. The other thing I want you to think about is what is your unique value proposition? Why would somebody go to your website? What are you bringing to the table that other people can't? When I was looking through a bunch of tweets, I saw this business analyst talk about this whole situation with Google, and they mentioned, you know, people need to start thinking about UVP, which is unique value proposition. But what is it that you bring to the table that nobody else can bring? 
when you're talking about a specific topic, right? You've got talents, and if you're going to build a website or build a blog, you're going to have to do it in an area that you have some expertise in now, instead of trying to build out a whole bunch of niches that you don't know anything about. I think everybody has unique talents. I think that there's ways that you can use those talents to create something online and create a business online. And it may not even be with blogging, right? You may decide to go the YouTube route. I really love YouTube. It's been good for me. My channel's not very big, but it just slowly grows month by month. And so it's been a good way for uh, people to find out about what I do. And then they go back to my website via the links that I have in the description to my YouTube videos. So I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, what SEO techniques should we use now? And again, I'm not a professional SEO. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what SEO techniques we should be using at this point. I know what I plan to do, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But the point is, you know, the updates just occurred. And so I'm not sure how anybody really knows for sure the best way to drive traffic back to a website through Google organic search, except you really need to be bringing value in anything that you create and you want Google to find, right? It still needs to use keywords and phrases and content and semantic keywords to uh, rank pages, right? It still has to do that. But the important thing is, is are you bringing value? And Frankly, I don't know how Google determines what's valuable and what isn't. It's Right now, it's all sort of a mystery to me. Like I said, there were some websites that got hit that wrote all of their own articles themselves. Now, does that mean the articles were valuable? I don't know. But it certainly wasn't an indicator that just AI sites were the only ones to get hit, right? So when I read stuff like that, again, these this is just purely anecdotal evidence. It isn't based in anything with statistical significance. But my point is this, you know, it's still sort of a mystery to a lot of people why some sites got hit and why some sites didn't. And so that's the world we live in right now. So all we can do is try and go forward and see what it is we can do to make sure we're bringing value to people when we write blog posts and articles. But one thing that I think will occur with SEO is there's going to be less and less people building public projects, right? So that's how we learned about a lot of our SEO techniques is we could go to YouTube and we could go to websites and read. I did A, B, C, D, and this is how I got traffic from Google. Now I think that's going to go away. I think there's going to be far fewer people doing this build in public type of situation like we've seen on YouTube, like we've seen online at various websites, right? So that's going to make it tougher for people trying to break in online. The one question I've been getting is what about keyword tools and AI writers and SEO optimization tools? What do we do with those? My goal with this channel has been to teach people how to use these tools effectively. I can't tell you specifically how to use these tools now in this environment. I can tell you what I'm doing. And I'm just approaching the way that I choose a niche and the way that I edit content differently. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I still think AI writing tools are great because they give you a foundation to start an article. So for example, I do a lot of photography. One thing that I've been doing is a lot of Little League photography. I've got a grandson in Little League. I really enjoy taking photographs of him. And of course, parents there want pictures taken as well. So I've become pretty skilled at getting some really good photos. And so if I were going to write an article for the keyword, how to photograph Little League baseball, that keyword is fairly generic, right? It sort of reminds everybody of how we were writing niche articles, right? These very basic how-to type articles. Now, if I were to write this article, I would approach it differently. My title for the article would be My Tips for Getting Great Little League Baseball Photos, Techniques for Better Use Sports Images. This is an AI written article that I had SEO writing create, and it's using a lot of keywords that I got from Neuron Writer. And so this is the base article. 
This is everything that the AI writer created on its own. I don't have any of my personal edits in here. I would use this post as just a foundation. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into this article, I'm gonna go into each section, and A, I'm gonna see, do I wanna write about this section? For example, they have this table here. Here's what makes up the league crucial for photographers stepping into the field. This to me isn't anything that I'm too interested in adding. So what I mean is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna cut all the fluff, I'm gonna edit this down, I'm gonna put in a lot of first person information about my experience photographing Little League Baseball. But I wanna make sure that I'm capturing everything that I can to make the article as complete as possible. So that's why as I go through here, I may not use things word for word, but this is important to, to write about, choosing the right camera and lenses. Now, when I read through what the AI has given me, it just gives me clues into what I need to add in my personal account of the tools, lenses, cameras that I use and sharing that. Same thing with you know understanding shutter speed and aperture settings. And I can talk about how I've used different shutter speeds, different aperture settings for different lighting conditions and the different kinds of photographs that I wanna take and add my own images in here. So really all of this is content that I wanna write about in most cases, but I'm gonna cut the fluff. I'm gonna make it very first person. I'm gonna add as much of my own personal point of view as I can and use this article as a foundational piece to get started. Now, what about optimizing the article? Now, after I write the article, that's where I would take it back into something like Neuron Writer, if that's your SEO optimization tool. And I'm not as concerned anymore about the scoring. This scores out pretty well, but I haven't made any of my edits to it yet, right? So once I do that, the score may drop. That's not something that I'm going to be completely concerned about because the thing that I'm trying to avoid is keyword stuffing. I don't want it to look like I created this article purely from an SEO perspective to get it noticed by Google. Where I bring value to this article is talking about my first person experience. It gives me lots of opportunities to add my own story in here. If you use an SEO optimization tool like Neuron Writer, for example, you definitely want to pay a lot more attention to where you see anything that's read because that means you've really used one particular keyword or term a lot of times. So for instance, Little League, I would go in, I would change a lot of those instances to Youth Baseball or Youth Baseball League, anything I can to avoid any appearance of keyword stuffing. We need to just be more careful about that. So. I haven't given up on AI. Uh, I mean, I can't even imagine writing an article without AI because every time I've done an article on my own and then I look at something AI writes, it always reminds me of different topics that I should have included in my article. What it boils down to is I'm continuing to use these tools, but I'm also being more prudent about the way that I use them. Now, here's what I expect. I expect these tools to evolve I think they have to evolve because of all the changes that are going on after this core update. And so that's what I expect to see happen in the future. Now, the one thing I will say, my articles that I've been writing using AI writers like SEO writing or Koala writer or agility writer as the foundational piece for the article and being optimized in neuron writer, they're all getting great traffic and Bing and DuckDuck. The problem of course is right Bing and DuckDuckGo have a small segment of the full search engine market with Google being the big player. That's really the issue, but you know, Bing likes my content, DuckDuckGo likes my content. The only uh, search engine that doesn't right now is Google. If you got slammed in this de-indexing situation or with a manual penalty, obviously with a manual penalty, you've got to go back to Google and try to get them to look at your site again. That's very hard to do. If you were de-indexed, I have no idea whether restarting your site under a different domain will help. That used to be something people could do and get their site restarted again. In fact, I got a manual penalty on a site. I just got a new domain and I cleaned up the content. 
restarted it, and I got a lot of traffic again. But I don't know if that's going to work this time. I have no idea. And it's still so early that even for people that are going to run out and do that, we're not going to know for a few months whether Google's going to like their content or not. And the bottom line is with these tools, keyword tools, AI writers, optimization tools, Google still needs information to understand what your article is about. It's not something that's, you know, magically happening and they just know your blog post is out there. I mean, there, there's got to be something that they're getting off of your page that helps them know where to rank you. For now, I'm just continuing to use these tools, but I'm just using them more prudently and I'm doing a lot more editing, adding my unique perspective and adding my expertise into my articles and not rushing so much to get something published. And that, that's what made AI so attractive, right? These AI articles could be written quickly. You could go scrub through them, maybe make a couple little changes and publish them. I just don't think you can do that anymore. You really need to show some uniqueness when you post an article. So like I mentioned a couple minutes ago, I think it's going to be important for us to quit depending on Google for all of our traffic, right? There's just too many things that go on and people's sites get wiped out too easily in these core updates. So diversifying your traffic sources can never be a bad thing. So what I plan to do in the future is to keep sharing different ways to drive traffic to your site from other traffic sources like social media tools and services, like YouTube, like podcasting, and continue to show you the different, you know, AI writer changes and SEO optimization tool changes and make sure and share any new tools that come up and maybe crop up after this whole core update thing is finished. And I'm not sure if it's quite finished yet. I think it's getting close to being finished. But the bottom line is that's what's going on. This is the best way I could find to answer a lot of the questions that I've been getting. And again, that caveat, I'm not an SEO optimization professional and never have been, nor do I want to be. So just keep that in mind. This is just what I plan to do. This is purely my opinion. And you may have differing ones, and that's great. And if you do, you know, I'd, I want to hear from you in the comments section. This is how I learn from other people. People leave comments, and I've, I've learned some great things from people that view this channel. So I really appreciate the community that's been built around it. So until next time, take care.